Hey guys, welcome back. Now, recently I've been talking a lot about fatigue and I've so far gone through sleep and nutrients and how those can affect your energy levels. Today we're talking about anemia. Now, anemia is a very common condition that affects many, many people. And there are different types of anemia, but I'm only going to cover the most common ones and the ones that are probably the most changeable or the most improvable. Now, before I go too far, first of all, we need to understand how the body is supposed to work. So what happens is we have our blood going through the body and in that blood, we have our red blood cells. Now, every red blood cell is designed to carry oxygen. So a red blood cell is a disc shaped cell. And it's, it's known as biconcave. So what that means is that it dips in the middle and it dips on both sides. So if we cut it in half and we look at it from that sort of cut section, what we'll see is that it dips towards the middle and then comes back out thicker on the outside. And the reason for that is just to create a little bit more surface area, just so these cells can carry more oxygen. Now, within every red blood cell is a protein called hemoglobin. And the red blood cells are stuffed full of hemoglobin. And the point of hemoglobin is to bind onto oxygen to carry that within the cells to transport it to target tissues. So hemoglobin is a protein. It binds onto oxygen and it carries oxygen within the red blood cells around the body. So here we have a blood vessel represented with all the little red blood, red blood cells within that. And what we can see is that as it's going through the body, those red blood cells are delivering oxygen, like a, a delivery driver uh, delivering your packages. It delivers oxygen to target cells or target organs. So we, as an example, we have the brain, massive consumption of oxygen. We have muscles and cells. Every cell in the body basically needs oxygen. So that's how it should be. But anemia is an inability to deliver enough oxygen around the body to target cells. What it means is that there's not enough oxygen to carry out the essential functions. So with anemia, if this was normal, imagine if we only had a fraction of what we should have and therefore we're only able to deliver a little bit less oxygen. The cells in those organs and target cells would not be able to function as well. Now with anemia, some of the symptoms can be quite generic. Can, they can appear in many diseases or many health conditions. But essentially what we might present with is chronic fatigue, dizziness, or we might have a slight shortness of breath, our heart might be going a bit faster, we feel like we've got palpitations going through the chest, our stools will be paler in colour, we'll just feel weak and generally tired, and our skin will be pale and cold and potentially yellowing. I'm not going to go into why, but that's to do with your liver. So they're some of the main symptoms of anemia. Now, generally speaking, when it comes to anemia, there's three major reasons why you might be anemic. So it's either to do with the production of blood or hemoglobin. It might be that we're, we're destroying the cells. So the, the, the red blood cells are being destroyed quicker than they can go around the body and deliver oxygen. Or we're losing blood. So I'm going to go into all three of those just a little bit more now. So let's start with production. We need to produce a certain amount of red blood cells in order to have enough to go around the body and deliver oxygen around the body. In order to produce red blood cells and hemoglobin, we need, the, we need both. In order to produce a red blood cell, we need enough B12 and folate. If you don't have one of these or both of these or enough of them, you will not be producing blood cells normally. Now, what I mean by that is that the blood cells might end up becoming too big. 
So we need B12 and we need folate to produce the right size red blood cells. But we also need the right nutrients to be able to produce hemoglobin. And for us to be able to do that, we need vitamin B6, we need zinc, and we need iron. And without enough of any of these three, again, we're not going to be able to produce enough. So that's the production of hemoglobin and red blood cells. But what if we are producing them fine, but we're breaking them down quicker than they should be? Now this isn't quite so changeable, but the causes of that could be to do with genetic type of anemia, which we can't do much about. Uh, it could be to do with the bone marrow, or it could be to do with chronic infection, inflammation, or chronic disease. And then the last one is when it comes to the loss. Now, maybe we're producing fine, we're producing enough hemoglobin, the right size blood cells. We're not destroying them, but what happens is maybe we're losing them. This is quite common in women who are of a menstruating age, so heavy periods, so heavy blood loss. It could also be in women who are postmenopausal and possibly even men with a gastrointestinal bleed. So we need to obviously investigate whether this anemia is coming from a production, a destruction or a loss phase. And there are really clever ways to do that. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but essentially we can get a lot of this information from a standard blood test. So when you go to your doctor, you, you will get a generic sort of blood test and it's testing your CBC, which is your red blood cells, the hemoglobin, the size of the blood cells. It's also testing your white blood cells, your liver function, kidney function, inflammation. Now all of these combined can provide so much information, but just from the CBC alone, what we can see is, are we producing enough red blood cells? If we are, that's good. Are we producing enough hemoglobin? If we're not, maybe that's a production issue. And then some of these down here represent uh, maybe the size of the blood cell or the amount of hemoglobin within the cells. So from that, we can kind of get an idea of whether we are vitamin or mineral or uh, metal deficient. And then we've got the RDW, which represents the size distribution of your blood cells. And that can tell us whether we've got uh, chronic infections or acute infections or whether there's a nutrient deficiency. So we can get a lot from this. So how does all of this relate to you? Well, the first thing is we need to obviously make sure we're getting enough nutrients. So I would say we need a diet that's high in vitamins and minerals and obviously vegetables and natural foods, but in, we need to make sure we've got enough vitamin B, uh, enough iron, uh, enough folate and various other different minerals and nutrients. So the first thing we can do is to improve our diets, make sure we've got enough of the right ingredients. If things are not changing through diet, it could be that we're, dest we're destroying our blood cells or it could be that we're losing. So it's worth investigating if you're a female, whether you are having heavy periods or if you're past that or you're a male, perhaps there's a gastrointestinal bleed or it could just be that it's genetic and, and there's some trait that you haven't had discovered. So when it comes to anemia, when it comes to fatigue, we need enough oxygen to be delivered around the body. If we're getting enough oxygen, then we're going to be feeling good and we're gonna be feeling like we've, we've got energy. If we're not able to deliver that oxygen around the body, then we're going to feel tired and lethargic and dizzy and weak. So it's always worth, if you are experiencing those symptoms, to get checked for anemia, get a blood test, and let's figure out if that could be the cause. But essentially the take home message is, if you are feeling fatigued, get yourself a blood test through your GP. You can also get a blood test through me as well. Let's have a look through that. Let's see if there are any uh, nutrient deficiencies or if anything is outside the reference range let's figure out whether it is coming from a production a destruction or a loss of blood cells and then from there we can then improve your nutrition we can improve your lifestyle and hopefully get you feeling a bit more energetic if you have any questions do stick them in the comment section and i'll be more than happy to get back to you